Hello, listeners. Good morning, good evening, good night, good afternoon, good <laughs> whatever time you are listening to us. I am Johnny, and you are listening to the Wayward Dragons Review episode. <laughs> You're a mess. <laughs> so I a few weeks ago, I started taking vitamins. Yeah. Uh, and... So now I have way, way too much energy until I crash for the day. <laughs> and like, it's, it, you know, that I didn't have enough energy to begin with. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're funny. You're funny. But I'm the other co-host. I'm Kelsey. And welcome to... This review episode, this side episode, where we review books, movies, TV shows, video games, anything that we're doing. So how are how are you? I am good. Uh... <laughs> Got too much energy, but well, yeah, but I am okay. I've been running amok, working as per usual. Uh, mm-hmm slightly annoyed because they changed one of the policies at work so uh they used to have it to wear because safety reasons obviously we couldn't have both earbuds in yeah and we could have one in well now they've changed it to where you can't even have one in oh that blows so i can't listen to audiobooks or podcasts now at work because they're like well you can play it on a speaker and You have six people in an area playing stuff on Bluetooth speakers that it's all different stuff. and That's too much. much, Well, yeah. So, well, so I found um, based off of a recommendation uh, and did some research into it. They're freaking awesome. These loop ear plugs. Mm -hmm. And I got like clearance from HR to wear them and, you know, work said they were going to cover the costs and all that other stuff. Uh, nice. But so I got them. Uh, they are amazing. I've heard really good things about those loop headphones. Yeah, so I got the uh, experience one. So it's like the middle one. Yeah. But you don't realize how much just ambient noise is around until mm-hmm. it's blocked out. Yeah. I, I would have got the quiet ones, but I still have to semi hear stuff at work. Yeah. But yeah, no, they are... They are freaking amazing. Yeah, one of my uh, vendors doesn't like loud slam sounds. He, it's uh-huh. a thing for him, and that's what he wears. And he, he thinks they're amazing. He yeah. recommends them all the time to me because I've got. Yeah, um, I, mean... I don't know where I put them. I have aftershocks, so they go up over your ear and they they um connect with your ear bone so gotcha. it's, a, I, it's a, so i can still hear everything on like going on around me and but i can still hear what i'm listening to so that's what i use so that way i can still hear everything around me well so. that would be nice but like i said they wouldn't allow us to use that what that blows yeah so but like i said the loop and no loop is not sponsoring us <laughs> uh, but you know if they want to i would be totally happy with that but they are freaking fantastic like hands down the best ear uh, plugs i've ever used yeah so yeah no it's all sorts of things so yeah no that's that's what i've been doing at work i've yeah uh what about i've you know got a bunch of books i've got a couple move or a couple shows and a movie that i recently watched but yeah. What about you? I've been okay. I've been okay. Um think think I'm moving up my my end date for my first job. So <laughs> thank you poor management for making this a easier decision. Um but I mean it, yeah. getting down to the wire with the wedding, we're less than 4 months now. So trying to get everything done and trying to work as much as I humanly can, but also have time to do everything. Um, but yeah, normal, normal exhaustion. <laughs> but, 
normal, normal exhaustion. So, do you want do you want to go first, or do you want me to go first? Because I've only yeah, read I'll books. go. I'll go first. Uh, I've got six books. Okay. Oh Jesus! <laughs> so, uh, no, four of them were before the new implementation, and the other ones were like what I've got free time after. Uh, and then I've got two TV shows and a movie, so I can start with the TV shows and movie first, I think. Okay. Uh, so first off, I was watched the first season of the show From. It is freaking awesome. Mm-hmm. It is a kind of like a weird urban fantasy, dark fantasy type thing. Uh, basically, this family gets ends up in this town... Okay. And the town itself is fairly run down. It looks like your typical poverty area. Yeah. And they find out that they have to be indoors at nightfall because if they're not indoors at nightfall, they get killed by these monsters. And like the only thing that stops the monsters from coming into houses is there's these little talismans that'll stop them. And with the talisman up, though, they have to be invited in. But the monsters look like people. So the monsters oh, yeah. try to convince people to let them in. And that's as far as I've gotten so far. Well, I mean, I finished the first season, but uh, without spoilers, that's really the only information <laughs> I could give. Uh, yeah. Really, really interesting concept. It almost reminds me in part of the vibes that the first season of Lost gave off. Yeah. Before it went to complete crap. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I finished everything up to date. They'll probably only do one more season for My Hero Academia. Uh, for any of our anime fans out there, know what that is. It is a hugely popular anime. Yeah. But, oh my god, that is <laughs> all I'm going to say. If any of our listeners are anime fans at all, our superhero fans highly recommend it. The premise of the show is there's a young, uh, it takes place in a world where 80% of the population has a quirk or some sort of superpower because yeah. quirks, what they call it. And, uh, because of this, and this has happened over time, uh, you have people who are of course villains yeah, because people abuse power. And then you have people who are quote unquote pro heroes where they're literally their profession is to be a hero. And there's like licensing and stuff you have to go through to become a hero. Well, yeah. the main character, uh, Izuka Midoriya, is, was one of the people that was born quirkless. But okay. his dream is to be a hero. And so he's just like, you know what? I'm going to do this without a quirk. And because of things that happen... He ends up with a quirk, uh, which, you know, kind of shouldn't happen because that's not how genetics work. You don't just <laughs> uh, spring up on stuff. But because of it, it's in narrative storytelling, it makes sense. Uh, yeah. But he basically, he inherits a quirk from another hero who uh, is actually his idol. Okay. And finds out that this quirk can be passed or is passed from like hero to hero over time. So m several people have had this before him. But so okay. he gets certain abilities, but his body can't hold up to the abilities because he's not used to it. And so like he tries to like punch something and he punches something so hard because of his strength that he shatters his entire arm. So he has to slowly train himself up to be able to use the ability and only use like a small percentage at a time. Uh, there's a lot of interesting and unique characters with different powers and some fun, fascinating backstories. Of course, there's drama, there's trauma, there's all sorts of fun things. <laughs> uh, well, so one of the characters, this isn't really a spoiler that show this like go, going not too far into it uh 
Shoto Todoroki. Okay. Is uh, his father is the number two ranked hero, and his father's big thing is fire. <laughs> well, his father being the number uh, two hero and being wealthy, yeah. um, and it being Japan and the culture, paid a dowry or not a dowry. What's it called? A dowry is what you get when you marry someone. Uh, ba- basically, he paid her father. For her hand in marriage. Bride price. Yes, thank you. The, he pl- paid a bride price for a very powerful ice-wielding family in hopes that they could have children or a child that would have both fire and ice quirks. And the eventual result of that is uh, Shoto Todoroki, yeah. which they aff- they affectionately call Icy Hot in the series. Because they give each other dumb nicknames and everything else, uh, but and so because of Fantastic. because of family drama and so much trauma, he hates his father, and there's a whole oh that whole family's fucked up, but yeah no it's uh it's fun it's a it's a good time. Okay. And then yesterday actually. I went to see the Into the Spider-Verse movie. It's the new animated Spider-Man movie. And oh boy. (laughs) So. (laughs) Everyone who knows me. Or all of our. Anyone who's been listening for a while. Knows that I'm a huge nerd. And that I love punk. Yes. There is a version of Spider-Pan. Spider-Pan. (laughs) Spider-Man. Which I have loved for years. And mm-hmm. they had mm-hmm. him in the movie. I knew he was going to be in the movie, which is Spider Punk. Yeah. Hobart Brown, also known as Hobby. And, oh, let me tell you. the <laughs> First off, the animation for him, because yeah. he, the way they did his animation, they did it like an old zine, which was like a thing that they did in the 80s, where yeah. <clears throat> basically photocopied magazines that punks did. Uh, to get information out. And so they animated him throughout the whole movie like a zine where everything else is like comic-esque. And so his animation itself took over two years to perfect for the animation artists. Uh, but uh, David Kaluuya, I don't know if you're familiar with him at all. Uh, he was the main character in uh, Get Out and was in Nope. Okay. Uh, but he voices him and does a phenomenal job. I I did not realize it was him because the character's got like a British accent. Yeah. Of course. Always. Uh, but of course it had so like, he was so punk because he's, <laughs> he's like, I don't like labels. And then proceeds to tell you like 17 labels that he identifies as. Uh, <laughs> there's like... Then there's also the uh, Indian Spider-Man, which was great uh, because in the like that dimension, er, basically India is everywhere yeah. instead of America, and so uh, he's going through, and they get to a museum, and the Indian uh, Spider-Man's like, and this is where the British keep all of the things they took from us. And then later the later the museum like collapses and gets destroyed and uh Miles Morales is like, What just happened? And Spider Punk's like the inevitable collapse of capitalism <laughs> And I'm just like, Yes. That's it. Uh, so yeah, no, oh, it was oh so so good. Like I said, some of the animation at time bothered me a little bit and some of the conversation to music ratio because the music was a little too loud uh, bothered me some but I think that was partly just because of the theater I don't know if that was the actual movie itself I'll have to wait till it comes out on home viewing to be able to tell you that yeah uh, yeah so that's what I've watched and then <laughs> <laughs> going through books uh, 
So I read the Hapless Dungeon Fairy series, which is another like the Dungeon Core series by yeah. Jonathan Brooks. Uh, he's got one more series that basically ties the the, the series and the last three that I've read by him together into one series. Okay. Uh, he's in the process of finishing up the last book, so whenever that finishes, I'll pick up those. Okay. Basically what happens is in that universe there's dungeon fairies that assist in the with the dungeon cores developing their uh, dungeons and stuff like that feeding them information well there was one that was born under under ominous circumstances okay and everyone kind of shunned her because of how the situation she was born into uh she but she managed, or she graduated Dungeon Fairy School, and the Council of Dungeon Fairies was basically sending her out because she was basically bad luck for dungeons, dungeon cores, were sending her out to work with problem cores that every time she'd worked with one would get destroyed. Until one day, she actually got absorbed into a core and became a dungeon core herself. And then all sorts of craziness happens from there. There's interdimensional beings that come and try to take over the world. Which is going to be, it's kind of the precursor to the crossover book series. Gotcha. But it was, I mean, it was enjoyable. It was about the same as the others. Uh, I really feel like, and it could be, like just he wanted the end goal of the crossover series and then just had to set up everything for the other series to get there. I don't know. But part of the time it feels like Jonathan Brooks was like, hey, I have an idea for a book series, but I don't know what direction I want to go with. Yeah. So I'm going to make four different book series and have it go in every single direction. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's 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 honestly what I, it has sounded like <laughs> that's i mean that's that's what it felt like and i mean i'm not disappointed it, yeah. they were some good books uh also you know because of those i ended up hitting my uh 52 book goal for the year i'm like yeah. 30 something books ahead of schedule too oh, yeah. so i ended up i ended up increasing <laughs> it to 72 books but then they changed or policy at work so i don't know if i'm gonna get to the 72 now we'll see time will tell yep uh, i'll just have to listen to it at like three times speed <laughs> <laughs> i just started doing like one and a half or one and a quarter uh, my my standards 175 to two no. uh that's my brain processes things faster so it's this is true it's hard for me to not, because it's just constantly in hyper mode. Uh, the other two books were the first two books from the Storm Below series by J.M.D. Reed, which are Above the Storm and Reavers of the Tempest. Those, <laughs> I'm... I'm not sure whether I like or dislike the series yet. Okay. Um, the world building concept is interesting. For some reason, they have, they call them Skylands as okay. opposed to islands. But basically, the, the land that people inhabit are all floating in the sky. Okay. And they use magical airships to travel from one to the other the story itself focuses around uh briarius also or it goes by ari who had a dream of being in the uh being a marine in their air fleet slash navy and uh on their 17th birthday or well, not 17th birthday, uh, the 17th year on the uh, summer solstice. Okay. 
all of the in their country all of the people who turn 17 that year go to the major city okay and gets a blessing or multiple blessings from their goddess okay. <clears throat> uh, depending on what their blessing is it will depend on what they can do like some of them have like you know they can shoot lightning some of them can fly some of them can you know pull moisture out of the air so there's there's different things depending on your blessing and your level of blessing so there's like three yeah. tiers uh but certain things that like being in being a marine you have to be able to have at least like tier two lightning manipulation yeah. uh so he gets it but he has it makes a deal with the girl that he's dating that he won't join because he wants to start a family and farm with her but the thing is is that if you don't volunteer there's so many spots they have available and they draft people so if you if people volunteer that draft hole is filled well it's him her and his best friend who is also in love with his girlfriend ah oh, love triangle knew it <laughs> <laughs> it's it's more of an, a crazy annoying infatuation that creates a lot of needless drama always, we always gotta uh, guys just talk drama. about shit just talk about shit Why but <laughs> but <laughs> so his friend his best friend and his girlfriend both get drafted uh oh he does not get drafted and he didn't volunteer so then he has to beg to be like to replace one of the people that were drafted. Uh, his oh, there's that's there's so much drama, but anyways, <laughs> yeah. So he ends up joining up just so they can do that, and she's like, "Well, we're from the same town, so we're gonna get separated." And he's like, "They won't separate us if we're married." So then they run and get married real fast, <laughs> and <laughs> that's not gonna solve anything, but okay. I mean, it fixes the problem, but then there's like all sorts of, like I said, there's all sorts of drama. Uh, and of course, you know, you need to have drama for a decent story a lot of oh, times. Yeah. Like there needs to be some kind of conflict, but it's just, it's too much at times. It's like, guys, <laughs> get your shit. maybe it's just, maybe it's just me being older because they're 17 year olds, <laughs> but it's like. What the fuck is this? And this is someone who, you know, I shamelessly enjoy. I guess not shamelessly. It's guilty pleasure. Some teen dramas. Like, I... Yeah. But, come the fuck on, guys. <laughs> I can't. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> like, there's an assassin who... Like, it, his best friend really didn't really think of him as a friend, per se. He was there because of the girl, but knew that the guy would kick his ass if he wasn't his friend. And then was like, you know, I'm going to take it. And he's just, like, forcing you to be here because of his anger. And you're afraid of him, so that's why you're with him. And uh, he's like, so I'm going to stop this. So then he tries First off, he leaves flowers on because they're married, so they have like their own special cabin away from the barracks. But he leaves like flowers on the windowsill for her, uh, and yeah, well, it's and then he makes a deal with an assassin and buys like some, uh, like basically plague spores and tries to kill him. But yeah, <laughs> what the fuck? Let me tell you, it's, yeah, no, it's like some Game of Thrones, it's like, if Game of Thrones was set in a high school. That's what it sounds like. It's, it's Game of Thrones set in Riverdale. That's, that's what it okay. is. Okay. <laughs> okay. With, with, with airships. Okay, so space, space <laughs> Game of Thrones. Well, uh, well, it's airships, so it's like, uh, basically ships with, that use air to fly so like yeah like blimps kind of yeah uh but yeah no so that's what i've been up to 
Oh. Uh, wow. What about you? How are your books, movies, <laughs> whatever you've been doing? So I've only read two books. And so I finished The Girl Who Can, Who Could Move Shit With Her Mind by Jackson Ford. Now, I don't know if I'm going to finish this series because I didn't really... It took me a minute to finish this one. Um, I didn't like how the... It just came off whiny. Like, a little too whiny. And she comes off a little too entitled. A little too self-centered, I guess. Um, so basically, this girl... Her parents genetically engineered her to be telekinetic. Or she can literally move shit with her head, her, her mind. She, her parents genetically engineered her to do this. And you find out that she's got siblings that her parents also genetically engineered to do other things. Her parents were trying to build a super soldier, basically. That, like, wouldn't need sleep, that could sense infrared, and that could move objects, becoming the ultimate soldier. And then the government finds out she gets taken by the government. Her parents get killed, ironically, during the Waco incident. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's the timeline we're in. Um, and then she kind of gets told that either you cooperate with this unit and you become part of this unit dealing with, um, you're going to work for the government and you're going to, um, you're going to do things that we can't, we legally can't do, but you're going to work for the government. So when we find someone that's laundering money, we're going to like send you in to like collect evidence type thing. And if you don't do this, then we're going to send you to these scientists that are going to cut you up while you're alive and test you and figure out why you're the way that you are. Um, so obviously, like, she works for the government. Um, and there are these weird murders that are happening that she gets framed for and she's got less than 24 hours to prove that she didn't do it. And you find out that there's another person just like her out in the world. Um, she's been basically lied to her whole life about her being the only one. Obviously, she's not the only one. Um, and it, it just it comes off kind of whiny. Um, I don't know if it's because it's like she's 21, just barely 21 in the book. Um, yeah, I don't know. If I think we're getting old. old. I just, I don't know. Well, like these fucking kids in their drama like she has this she like she's obviously been homeschooled and like super sheltered her whole life so when she moves to LA she's only got one friend and he starts falling for her and but like he doesn't want to date her because of her telekinesis tell PK is what she calls it her PK powers because when she has sex she can't control her abilities. So, like, shit just starts flying everywhere because she can't control everything. And so he doesn't know what he wants to do, so she's kind of left in this weird limbo, but, like, he has, she has to tell him everything because he's the only person that can help save her and her team, and then, but then she gets not only betrayed by him, but by somebody else, and it's like, it just, she comes across very self self-centered in a way mm -hmm. and i'm like i don't know if i want to continue this like mm, i don't know i don't know and like there are like three and a half stars on goodreads so i'm still kind of like mm, mm. i based off my experience with the exception of like one or two things uh People's reviews on Goodreads is fairly decent. I know. I know. Like, there was... I think the worst thing I found was there was a poetry book that 
someone had rated it five stars and i was just like oh okay and i read part of the poems in it and i'm like wow this is some emo stuff that i would have written back in middle school like it's it's bad middle school poetry that was published nice and i did some digging and apparently the guy is wealthy and like he paid for his own publication oh so he didn't get like an an exist i mean in certain things i get being self-published but yeah if you are attempting to get poetry published and no publisher will pick you up it might be saying something yeah yeah um i'm learning to trust the goodreads reviews which is why i'm kind of hesitant about continuing the series because it's like it's it kind of stays like even keel because it it doesn't it doesn't grab you and like suck you in because i i need that i need to be grabbed my attention needs to be grabbed or i'm gonna lose focus and struggle to finish it so that's why like there was no attention grabbing so i was like okay and then (laughs) so i read too many curses by a lee martinez too many curses too many curses so (laughs) you know i love beauty and the beast it's like my favorite disney movie right Uh uh-huh so imagine a book told by the little figurine like the candelabra and mrs teapot um imagine a book told from like their point of view okay so there's this almighty wizard and instead of killing people instead of killing his enemies he curses them and turns them into weird inanimate objects (laughs) so like a wizard that he was going up against that instead of killing him, he turns him into like this toothless fruit bat (laughs) or like this other person that wanted to kill him. He turned him into a gargoyle that just, he literally can't shut up. He turned in, he turned this one guy, um, into a vampire that, Every time he moves, he sounds like jingle bells. <laughs> like he's got like witch bells. So it's it was very fun to listen to this and it, it gave me Beauty and the Beast vibes, but it was if it was told from the characters in the castle. And basically what happens is is <laughs> the main wizard of the the owner of the castle he dies <laughs> he gets killed like two chapters in and this other like great powerful witch shows up and this kobold is the the mistress of the castle she's the one that like takes care of the castle and it's just her trying to undo what the wizard has done because he's done he's like put (laughs) weird magical safety precautions in um so this guy's like literally insane he is he's insane but it was so fun to read because it it was just like this is so stupid (laughs) like like it was it was funny it was especially the little fruit bat he is he's a he's scottish Okay. You got like this got this little Scottish like fruit bat <laughs> that is like, let me at him. <laughs> it's like, buddy, you can't even eat fruit on your own. <laughs> so it's but like you have um you have like kind of King Arthur vibes in it. You've got the the sword the sword and the stones in it. Um but it, it's it's actually very enjoyable, so I might kind of read a little bit more of his stuff. But that and you said this was called what? Too Many Curses by A. Lee Martinez. I'm going to put this on my to-read list. It's 
It was so funny to listen to. The Audible is only available on Audible. Um, because it 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 has that little thing in the triangle only available on Audible. And I'm like, God damn it! So the, there is an audio book, but it it was very it's very enjoyable. It gave me Beauty and the Beast vibes, but like from the offshoot characters, because he does. He's got like a bleeding wall, and um. That's what he turns somebody into is a is a literally a bleeding wall. Um, it looks like this author has a lot of fun <laughs> books. Huh? So it looks like this author has a lot of fun books. Yeah, it was. It's one of those ones of like it. It felt like a pick me up book. Yeah. Like like there's a hangman. He takes the body of a hangman, and um, obviously after you get hanged in in certain countries you get beheaded and um he saves his head and his body and his body becomes his um cook and the head just sits on the shelf just constantly cackling like a crazy person like and then it's really cute she's got a monster under her bed that lives under her bed (laughs) the cobalt this cobalt's the main character and um she does she's got like this really cute little monster that (laughs) lives under her bed that constantly wants stories to be told to it because it's scared (laughs) so yeah and then I'm almost done with what's this one by Anna that I'm listening to so my hoopla will come up oh Dead by Sunset by Anne Rule um, obviously it's true crime. It's like 20 plus hours and I'm almost done. Um, but basically it's, it's your stereotypical, like, manipulator. He's so manipulative. It's in the, the shit that he would do to his wives, his ex-wives is, is astonishing. Um, holy shit. Just constant fuckery with his wives he doesn't care um but i'm not i don't know how that book turns out yet so but it's how people can get how people can be manipulated especially that extreme in like an abuse situation i always find extremely um fascinating what goes through people's minds of when this amount of abuse happens because these women were absolutely terrified of this man. Um, so. Not for the faint of heart. Um, because the victim dies very gruesomely. So. If you don't like blood and guts. I highly recommend not reading that. So. But. I've, I've been listening to books when I get ready in the morning. So I stay focused. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> because. Um, I'm finding the closer I get to my end date, it's harder and harder and harder for me to get up in the morning and be on time. Um, it's like senioritis when you're graduating high school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, I have, I'm finding that I have to listen to a book so I can get up for my first job. So. Yeah. 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 That's why Spotify has made for me with no, like asking from me a happy mix and so i blast that in the morning yeah where i'm just like ah, la, 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 ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yeah i just because with like a true crime i kind of can i can set my foot fo- my phone down and get ready but still kind of hear everything kind of know what's going on yeah so that's what i've been because i i don't want to wake up at all and knowing I have like two ish months left is not helping. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. So, yeah. yeah. Well, but that's I all think I that got. about. So, yeah, I think that about wraps this up. Uh, if you have not been listening, highly recommend you guys listening to our ongoing series of the Satanic Panic. Yep. We've got three more episodes left. Yes. Uh, the last episode, the one you missed, is 
me yammering on about how the satanic panic influenced media. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, it's there. so, yeah. We're good to go. So, we think you guys should have an awesome time. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, <laughs> recommend. Tell your enemies. Tell all the mundos. <laughs> That's oh, it. And I forgot. Happy National Audiobook Month. Oh, yeah. Is it? Okay. Yeah, June is actually National Audiobook Month. It's also <laughs> Pride Month for those yeah. of us that live in the United States. Yeah. Uh, if you want to know more about that, I go on a little rant about that in our uh, yeah. last episode. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Join us. One of us. One of us. All right. <laughs> you have a splendiferous day, and we will catch you next time. Bye. Bye.